Hello everyone, myself Soumya, Assistant Professor in CSE ML Department, MLR Institute of Technology. In this video, we are going to discuss about public versus private blockchain. So, coming to the overview of this presentation, this presentation covers what is public blockchain, what is private blockchain and what are the differences between public and private blockchain. So, first of all, what is public blockchain? The name itself, it is telling public blockchain. So, public blockchain is open network. It is open to everyone, anyone. Anyone can access this blockchain. So, coming to the formal definition, public blockchains are open networks that allow anyone to participate in the network. That is, public blockchain is permissionless. So, there is no permission here. So, we can directly participate in the network. That means, the user can read the transaction, can write the transaction, can validate the transaction. All these actions are possible by any user. So, in this type of blockchain, anyone can join the network. They can read, write or participate within the blockchain. So, participate in the sense they can validate the transaction also. So, public blockchain is a decentralized, as we know, blockchain itself is a decentralized and does not have a single entity which controls the network. So, public blockchain is completely decentralized. There is no central or single authority to monitor the network. So, each and every node in the network have equal access to the network. So, they can take equal decision, equal rights. Everyone, every node in the network has equal right to take the decision. The data on a public blockchain are secure as it is not possible to modify or alter data once they have been validated on the blockchain. So, once the blockchain data is validated and it is added to the blockchain, so no one can tamper that. So, coming to the examples for this public blockchain, Bitcoin, the first ever cryptocurrency, uh, Ethereum, after Bitcoin, we have another cryptocurrency called Ethereum, Monero. So, this is also one of the cryptocurrency. All these are examples for public blockchains. And coming to the private blockchain, the name itself it is telling it is private. That means it is uh, centralized. I can't say fully centralized, but it is it comes under centralized. So, there is a central authority to monitor this private blockchain. So, a private blockchain is managed by a network administrator and participants need to consent to join the network. So, that is private blockchain is permissioned blockchain. So, if I want to participate in the private blockchain, first I need to take the consent. I need to take the permission. So, the network administrator, a central authority will monitor this private blockchain. So, there are one or more entities which control the network and this leads to reliance on the third parties to transact. So, here we have central server or central person to monitor the network. So, in this blockchain, only entity participating in the transaction have knowledge about the transaction performed, whereas others will not have been able to see the transaction as they are private. So, here um, no one has authorities to see the transaction. For example, I can consider our college is maintaining a blockchain. So, I am taking it as a private blockchain. So, here no one can see the data. Uh, for example, I am taking as a principal. So, he is the administrator here. So, he needs to take the permission. So, he, ha he can only read the transaction, write the transaction and validate the transaction. So, for validation or writing purpose, he can give some uh, permission to other entities also. We need to take the consent first. For example, the principal is giving consent to all HODs to write the transaction and to validate the transaction also. And coming for read permission, he can give the permission to all faculty also only for reading permission, right? So, he is the central authority to monitor this blockchain. And coming to the examples for this private blockchain, Hyperledger Fabric, R3 Coda. So, these are some of the private blockchains. So, coming to the difference between public and private blockchain, based on the access. So, public blockchain, in this type of blockchain, anyone can read, write and participate in the blockchain. But coming to the private blockchain, the central authority or upon invitation. So, what I told principal is the central authority, but he can also give the permission to HODs to validate the transaction or to read or write the transaction. And coming to the network actors, in the public blockchain, anyone can access, anyone can participate. So, they don't know each other. But coming to the private blockchain, we have only limited actors here, limited nodes here, everyone know each other. And decentralized versus centralized. As we know, public blockchain is decentralized, there is no central authority, whereas in the public blockchain, it is completely centralized. And speed, 
in the public blockchain the size is very more anyone can participate here so that's why it is slow but coming to the private blockchain it is centralized and the number of nodes are limited so that's why it is very fast and transactions per second so obviously it is lesser why because it is slow but coming to here it is more and coming to the security purpose so as we know it will it will provide the security so no one can tamper it so but private blockchain it is actually a centralized so we are maintaining complete data at the centralized server only so it may be prone to attacks and coming to the energy consumption so it it needs more energy why because we have more nodes of data more blocks of data whereas in private blockchain it has less a uh, less block it contains less blocks so it contains less power consensus algorithm so in public blockchain we know it uses pow that is proof of work proof of stake and etc and coming to the private blockchain maximum cases it uses voting so voting related consensus mechanisms are we have proof of authority and uh, practical byzantine protocol and next we have attacks so in public blockchain we have 51% attack so there is a possibility of getting this 51% attack so in public blockchain we don't know the validators that means the users we don't know so one user cannot know the other user so if 50 uh, as as in the the logic of proof of work is if 51% of the people say the transaction is valid then we can add the transaction to the blockchain but here if 51% of the persons or if the 51% of the nodes are not valid that means all these 51% are attackers only then what all these attackers will do they will vote for a invalid transaction and that transaction will be added to the blockchain so that is called as 51% attack so the 51% if more than 50% people are saying if the transaction is valid that transaction will be added to the block that we know already but if all the 51% people are attackers then there is a chance to add the invalid transaction to the block so this is the 51% attack but coming to in private blockchain we have only limited persons and there is no proper validation proper validation in the sense we are not involving any pow or pos mechanisms here so basically we are using voting mechanism here so the principal or the hods or the faculty needs to validate the transaction coming to the examples as we know so in the public blockchain we have seen bitcoin ethereum many monero litecoin right name coin all these are comes under public blockchain so whereas in private blockchain r3 and coda so these are the different examples for private blockchain so that's about uh, public and private blockchain so in this video we discussed about what is public blockchain what is private blockchain and what are the differences between public and private blockchain thank you